Hello and welcome to the Gunpoint Podcast. World without string is chaos. I'm here with Luke. Yes, indeed. Jonathan. That's me. And I'm Brendan. Today we're talking about Mouse Hunt. Uh, so as always, going around, Luke, what did you think? I thought this movie was an experience. Um, Vague? Jonathan? I don't. Uh... I uh, I was confused for a really large part of it. I, I had to double check three different times that I, I, I had the right movie. Interesting. Uh, I really like this movie. I still think it's great. I think my opinion as a, as a child stands. I don't think I enjoyed this particular film. Okay. I was supremely bored. So what, what confused you about it? I was just like, I was like, is this the movie that he wanted me to watch? I was like, is this a kid's movie? Like, what? If, and then I was like, it's not a kid's movie, but it's just like a, like a Buster Keaton sort of like a old yeah, fashioned slapstick. Like slapstick sort of deal. And my opinion on that is like, if you want to watch really good slapstick, watch classic slapstick. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the interesting thing about this movie that while it is for kids, it also like isn't at times. Um, yeah. It definitely exists in, in a. Uh, this movie's a lot. I, I can I can talk in depth about this movie's production. What makes it weird? Um. So you, Luke, you you'd seen this as a kid because obviously, um, we owned it on VH, watched it a number of times. Yeah. Um, but you said your opinion hasn't changed. It hasn't really changed. No. Because I think I like this bet. I, I think I liked this viewing better than I liked it as a. Really. Yeah. What about it? Do you like? Uh. Well. So first, the soundtrack's phenomenal. Um, I'll give you that. It's a. It's a good like orchestral it's, soundtrack. It's, I was actually annoyed at the main theme and how much it came up though. Yeah. Well, the, it, so this is. Were you annoyed at how much it was used in the movie, or how much you've heard it other places? How much it was used in the movie. Okay. I don't think I've heard it anywhere else. Oh, this move, this theme got yoinked a lot. Oh yeah. In the like early two thousands. It was this a good is... theme. I will give you that, but it just it was overused. Yeah, the theme the theme's phenomenal. I actually like that it was used in the movie and used like diegetically, like, um, the gears in the factory when it starts up play the theme, uh. When the cat, when Catzilla's chasing the mouse, plays on the piano. When the mouse jumps, you hear the little uh, crescendo in the theme. It's like timed with a lot of things. Very cool. And it's by Alan Silvestri, who's like a very talented composer who does a lot of iconic stuff. He back to the Future, he did Avengers, he did Polar Express. Speaking of Catzilla, uh, Tom and Jerry. If you want to watch that, just watch Tom and Jerry. Yeah, I mean, yes, Catzilla and the mouse is a very Tom and Jerry scene. But the, the mouse is very Jerry-esque in general. Like, it is intelligent and harassing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like the actors, you know, are, are some of them are, like, really, like, a hit. I would say, like, I like them a lot in this. And some of them, I'm like, oh, I don't, don't prefer them. Like, I really like uh, Ernie. Nathan Lane. I feel like Ernie's, Ernie's fun. Pumba. Yeah. Yeah. Timon. yeah. Timon. Pumba's also in the movie. But oh, I think, is he? Yeah, he's the, uh, he's the, the kennel owner, Maury. Oh. Hmm. But then uh, I, think, I think Lee Evans, Lars, is just... Yeah, so that's the thing. Lee Evans is a comedian, not necessarily. I felt like his, his performance was... Like a three out of ten, probably. Like his performance alone. Yeah, I think he was mostly there to do faces, I think, and to be the bumbling idiot. Um, which, yeah, I mean, it could have been it. But yeah, but Lee, just, Lee Evans isn't as good as Nathan Lane in this, obviously. Not an actor. He's He's been in a few movies, but he's primarily... I had no movie, or I had no... I had no one to root for during this movie. Like, there wasn't, you know, there yeah. wasn't like a... a in Odyssey, there was nothing really. I mean, there was clearly a goal for them, 
But also, like, multiple times throughout the movie, I was just like, he offered you $10 million. Just fucking, okay, sounds good to me. Well, they originally didn't realize it. No, 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 like, later on, during the auction. Oh, well, yes, but that, that's Nathan Lane's character. He's greedy, he wants more. I think, I think you're supposed to derive that if they had realized what he was saying the first time he came over, they would have taken the money because they're both, you know, standing shell shocked in the door. Um, but by that point, the auction is planned, and I, I mean Nathan Lane's character throughout the whole movie is all about money. And also, as soon as you figured how much it was, you like no one, not even Nathan Lane, as they're in each months, would have uh, fucking been like, oh, I'm gonna. Do all this work and like yeah. a lot of the work they were doing is and maybe it's because i'm a homeowner and that shit like triggers me to see like like it literally made me feel bad like oh yeah that's one of the scenes i wanted to bring up uh when they get the house evaluated it's uh he he says you know there, there's that dialogue line that the uh the yeah. evaluee it says and then nathan lane repeats where it's like well you know the last one went for six but that was Ten years ago, and it didn't have this exquisite molding. And then the next scene, you cut to fucking uh, Lars boarding yeah. over the molding, and I'm like, oh no, yeah. Yeah. you fucking idiot! I, I, re I remembered the scene of the mouse, like the nails going in. I didn't remember him going over the molding. I was like, oh Jesus! No, and like multiple times throughout this, like everything they try to do, obviously it fucks it up. But like that didn't make me like at no point was I like. Ha, idiot. Like, I was just like... Because, oh. yeah, they were the ones that you're kind of and supposed they, to root for. And like, they weren't really, like... They weren't assholes enough to, like, warrant, like, fuck them. Like, Nathan Lane, pretty much, his his character was maybe enough. But, like, I feel like Lars... I mean, maybe needed, like, a third character or something to, like, make them, like, oh, yeah, they're a bunch of assholes. So, I don't know if I agree that you, they're the ones you're supposed to root for. I mean, who, who, do, who do you root for in Tom and Jerry? Okay, but here's the thing. Like, that's actually what I wanted to get to, is, like, this movie was at its best when it was about the mouse, even though its best slapstick wasn't in the house, which is, like, another issue. All right, actually, I'll take it one issue at a time. Go ahead. So the mouse is obviously the one you're supposed to, like, you are actually supposed to root for. I, I don't why, think you're supposed to root for does, anyone. Why does 50% of the movie not take place at this house? Like, so yeah. much of the, this movie is, like, not at its core. So I, I don't think in the contest you're supposed to root for anyone. I, and I think it's, it's doing two things, right? The, the mouse hunt aspect of it, flying the slapstick, and then it's also telling the story of two brothers who are separated and to come together. And that's reflected in a, in a few different things. There's slapstick in other places, but sure. I mean, but for the most part, the, the, that genuine slapstick is them versus the mouse. I just didn't feel like the movie itself um, had no emotional stake. Like, yeah, like it, it wasn't like I was like, oh man, if only they came together, like it would work so good. Like at no point I was just like, oh, what the fuck are they doing? Like, oh my God, what the fuck? Like the entire movie, I was never like, I never like cared if they won too much but like my own brain was just like cringe the entire movie yeah like it's cringe the movie yeah i don't, I don't think you're supposed to root for anyone to win in the contest I mean, um, that's kind of a mistake i'd say or at least just no because like, like tom and jerry who do you root for i mean you root for jerry usually so you just think this cat should be infinitely tortured well, I mean, because the... Jerry's the aggressor a lot of the time. He's just fucking Tom's day up. Well, I mean, usually he's just trying to get some food. But he also just like fucks Tom's day up constantly. Yeah. I don't Sometimes. think you're supposed to root for either. But they didn't. They didn't show enough of the mouse, uh, like being a good boy, for me to be like, oh, or oh like, dude, he crawled into a sardine can and he does. Look at that. But like that's that's, that's it. also they it's a real mouse that they trained to do that. It's, yeah, I, so I was some of it. I'm like the CG is too good for this to be. Yeah, yeah the CG was they they didn't use a lot of CG for the mouse in this. Um, they trained sixty mice to, to do things. So yeah. 
Yeah, there there's... was CG, but you could really tell when it was because it's obviously yeah. it's a fucking ninety nine movie. But ninety seven. I think again the 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 issue I have with it is like I don't care about the mouse because the mouse they just show like sitting in a bed like oh cute me look he has a little uh, poster like imagine if that mouse was actually like uh, their dad's mouse. Like, uh, there's actually mouse. there is actually a, a popular theory that the mouse is uh, Rudolph once reincarnated and that he's trying to bring the brothers back together. That's a pretty far fetched theory. It is. Uh, it is. The heritage. movie is far fetched as far as like the yeah. whole thing. I mean, look, I kind of is... assumed that the mouse was the reason that one person killed herself or whatever. Look, Rudy Schmutz, right? His face moves around in the painting all the time. Yeah, I love you know? that. Because he looks around, he looks angrier, he looks like surprised. Yeah, his his, his, his face changes based on the relationship of the brothers and what they're doing. Which I think is, it's it's interesting, but I just, I don't feel like it comes together into a solid movie. Also, this movie's the original Ratatouille. I gotta give it to that, that is true towards the end. But again, that was so, like, out of fucking left field, like... It wasn't like they were building this up like, oh, it's because he's like, yeah, you get he makes the sandwich. Yeah. But like it's not the it's not enough he to be like gains oh, Ernie's is- respect because he makes a dope ass sandwich. I mean Ernie literally throughout the movie, Ernie only cares about money. Yeah. But in like And then the I mouse mean, makes food and makes him money. So he's very happy story, with the mouse. The story was so all over the place, and I think that Luke kind of I didn't even realize it until he said it, and it's because, like, you just didn't have anybody to root for, but for me, that kind of came out in the sense where I was just like, why are we focusing on all of this other stuff? Like, I don't care about, like, I didn't care about their dad's death, or even the fact that they were estranged brothers, because I was like, is this a slapstick comedy? And then also, there was, like, really no lesson to be learned. They didn't really come together. It, it, I mean, they're they're building their cheese, string cheese. Yeah, wait, they the definitely came together in the end. But, like, that had nothing to do. Like, that was the mouse. Yeah, and they, they, they didn't, all they didn't choose way. anything. Like, they 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 were selfish till the bitter end. And, and by they chance... Selfish at the right, right. Yeah. But, but the house gets destroyed. And they realize... Do they? Because I think that they I just... I don't think they even... They just, they were like, okay, well, now we have to fix this factory. If the mouse had fucked over the factory, I fully believe that they would have destroyed the factory the exact same way. But instead of destroying the factory, the mouse made it a cheese ball thing. I, I don't know. And that had cause... nothing to do with the characters growing. It had everything to do with the mouse, instead of fucking them over, giving them a gift. I, I would argue that they, they were already uh, together at that point. Because so, like, they stand in the rubble of the house, they pick up Pop's Lucky String, it splits. And then they go to the factory together. They're not arguing. They're not, like, you know, panicked about the house. They, like, I would say the house crumbling down was very much a, a breaking of, like, all right, we're done with it. And because of their shared experience. And then the mouse gives them the gift of the spring cheese. But, like, they, they showed nothing. To me, what I saw was that they lost everything. And they were like, well, we better not fuck this up. And then they... They were fine. Yeah, but I mean, I will say... The best actor in this was Mr. Alexander Falco. With his amazing... Uh, or Maury Jaikin. With his amazing... Uh, I would never paid more than $10 million. I think a lot of people in this movie are just like having fun. Yeah. I will say the slapstick in this was pretty good. I you, mean, can, you can tell they had fun making this, definitely. Yeah. I mean, what's weird is I can see, like, the weirdness of this movie translate into, like, Pirates of the Caribbean. Right. I, I really can see it, but I feel like this is, like... This is also his first batter, film. Yeah, way. when the batter, like, you know, first comes up to the plate, and it, it's like, eh, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm just going to let these actors, like, just have fun. Yeah. It's kind of like when you're a coach, you know, like, the first time you're a coach of anything, like, go have fun. But we're not going to, like, make it cohesive. But we're just going to have fun. And I think this movie is, you know, it's... I think it would be fun for, like, kids. Yeah. But at the same time, 
it, it's got elements that are like even kids are gonna be like what happened here like the girl stripping down to nothing and like take me here but, but that's like, also like very present in a lot of kids stuff there's always things for adults yeah but that that is a little more than like usually you hear some like reference with like a veiled like two two meaning thing you know yeah there's also there's a scene that was taken out uh, uh partially when when the is either lawyer i guess uh, goes to april to uh inform her about the auction or uh, he's trying to find uh, Lars and inadvertently refer uh, tells her about the office. He, she answers the door in a nurse's outfit, and there was more to that scene where, some like somebody says like I do oh, I didn't know April was a nurse, and she's not. She had already had a new boyfriend, dressing up as a nurse when the lawyer came by. Yeah. Also, that was kind of random too. The whole she was at the factory thing. Yeah. Like, well, she wanted yeah, the money. Like, yeah, but I feel like a lot of stuff happened in this movie that, like... Hold on, wait, though, I, I disagree that that's random. She finds out about the auction. She knows where Lars is going to be. She goes to seduce him to get the money. That's pretty clear cut. I would say... I don't know. I gotta say I, I prefer Rat Race to Mouse Hunt. In Rat Race. I prefer the classics if you want slapstick. But, uh, okay, so I also, I don't think this is strictly slapstick. I think this is supposed to be a family movie. And... I think everything that is not slapstick is trash in this movie. Okay. I don't, I don't judge comedy movies as harshly on their story beats because it's often not So that's what I'm judging. Point. I'm judging it on its comedy, and its comedy is slapstick. If I want to watch slapstick, I'll watch a classic. Um... This is also the so this this movie is a first in in a few ways. Um, it's Gore Verbinski's first uh, feature film. It's also DreamWorks' first family comedy. Uh, they wanted this movie to be Home Alone, and then the, the script that got written was darker. And apparently, the executives did not like that it wasn't just Home Alone. I will say that it's interesting that now that you say that. I mean, the story behind it seems interesting enough. I mean, he goes from DreamWorks and being, like, limited to going to Disney and kind of getting whatever he wanted, as far as I can tell. Or Verbinski? Which is the opposite. Yeah, I mean... I don't think he got whatever I, he wanted. I think Pirates of the Caribbean was just... I mean, Pirates of the Caribbean didn't exist. It's based on a ride that has next to no story. So it was sort of just a blank slate. He got to do whatever the fuck he wanted. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's he got to do whatever he wanted because Disney was going to let him do whatever he wanted. It's because they picked something that was nothing. Yeah, but I, I mean, it worked out for him. Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. And Pirates is great. And I mean, like, it's not like Mouse Hunt had a story before it. Not that I'm aware of. Maybe there has been. Well, I mean, they wanted it to be. That was the idea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I like Gore Verbinski. I mean, obviously some of the later Pirates. He, he hasn't done the last two. I think he did one. I don't like Pirates 3, um, but, but Pirates yeah. 1 and 2, this movie, Rango, I think are all very good. We were actually having a discussion on how, how often the third movie is a flop when it comes to trilogies oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. at work today. Like, the third is almost always the worst. Yeah, I mean, that's there, fair. There are a few examples, a few, of course. That show Last Airbender is an, is an exception. Of what? The third season was not a flop. I wouldn't even... Well, know, see, like, seasons are like, different than movies. Yeah, it's not, it's not a trilogy oh, okay. in a movie. Because with TV shows, you have to consider how long they were. And also, usually either the first the first season is the best, or like the last season is the best, especially for narratively driven yeah. shows. And Avatar hits it with... It literally just keeps getting better as you watch it. Yeah. Like, I don't think anyone can argue that. But like, back on track... Um, yeah, I definitely feel like At World's End is his worst work. I I would I'd say At World's End is like unbearable for me to watch. Well, this is just like really cringy. I really had to I really had to be like, fuck it, we got to get this done with. We got to get this over with. I was just supremely bored while watching it. I wasn't bored. I was just 
cringing like hard like oh fuck. whenever like whenever anything that wasn't a comedy sequence was going on i was just like oh, i don't want i don't care i don't want to watch it like, like when, just... when when decisions are made out of ignorance and you didn't like know how that ignorance came to be because maybe like they just never had any education whatsoever maybe that's what you know happened here but like some of the decisions the characters, characters make yeah. are just like, oh, fuck, that's such a bad... Like, what are you smoking? Like, Oh, constantly. I mean, they're both clearly idiots. Like, yeah. I mean, er Ernie is clearly an accomplished chef. Beyond that, he doesn't have seemingly many marketable... Um, also, I don't know if he was, like a, he was like a compulsive gambler or something. He owns what is one of the most popular restaurants that the mayor is going to during his re-election... And after getting fired, doesn't have twelve hundred dollars to his. Well, I mean, do you ever see him be a gambler? No, I'm just saying, like he, he, something was going on there. Surely, well, <laughs> correct. Um, and then like Lars is, I mean, the easier answer. He he has only worked at his father's string factory his whole life, and doesn't actually work in the factory because he doesn't know how to run the machines, as shown by the scene where uh, clothing ripped off and cannot shut down the machines. So yeah, they're just Smart idiots. Burger. That was my favorite sequence, though. That was probably the funniest. It was pretty... Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I like aspects of this movie. Uh, they, they went for practical stuff in a lot of cases. The mousetrap scene is all... It's actually 800 mousetraps that they had to reset for each scene. I heard uh, that. It's pretty dope. I can't believe that they all, they all uh, snapped like that. How it goes. I mean, it doesn't take a lot to set up. No, they, they individually did each and every one of them, but they timed it to all go off like relatively at the same time. I would I would bet they could have done it. It wouldn't have looked as clean like waves approaching them, but I, I would bet they could have just let them go. Yeah. Um, this was also William Hickey's last role, the father. Before he pooped, yeah, he uh, he had uh, oh, yeah, so he was he was actually sick in that scene where they shot of him. He was oh, kind of sad. actually very ill. I think he has two movie credits after this that were in production longer, but this was the last shot. Hmm. I think one of the the funniest like there was a uh, an actor who was getting old who was talking about like when you're old. The only the characters you'll play are it's like oh yeah you look like you could die yeah that's, that's when you know you're about to yeah. die. Well, I imagine like I like imagine being approached for this like oh we need you to play a father in this role that's going to die and like did they know he had emphysema and that's why they approached him or like let's get him we only need him for a day yeah crazy um, yeah I don't know I I enjoy this movie I think it's fun. I'm not going to be as harsh on it because it's comedy. Like, I, I obviously, I still want comedy to be internally consistent. Like, you know, the, the scene in the fireplace is a bit much, but it's like, oh, this is a slapstick comedy. Yeah, but I was just bored. Like, normally I, I'm not bored with comedies. This one, I don't, I can't say for sure. I just think, like, I never got what the goal was for anything. Like, I didn't get where it was going. I didn't get who I was rooting for, like, why I was watching it. And if I was watching it for just the, the ha-has, like, why did it stop ha ha -ing? Why did it stop and go talk about these characters? Because it, it's just still supposed to be a family movie. About the I think that brothers. I think that it was a complete and utter failure on that half then. And on the other half. While oh, I, I agree that the family part is not, not strong. Yeah. Yeah, I think this movie would have been a lot better, like you said, it had uh, good old. What was it Gorb? Gore Verbinski Gore Verbinski. full control. The the only thing I, I would say is without the family aspect, if it's just the mouse hunt, just a slapstick comedy. Um, I, I I don't think there's a solution to who you're supposed to root for. I think either is a bad choice. 
I don't yeah, think that, that's, that's fine. Where... Like if it if it is purely that the entire time it doesn't need it, but I also don't think that okay. it can exist with just that. I just think that uh it was a complete failure on that part and they spent too long on it for it to be inexcusable. That's fair. I, I, it's a hard choice in in situations like this, or because Tom and Jerry, I, I wouldn't like you. I, I think the mouse is more sympathetic in this, also because it's like it's been the mouse's house for like. I mean, not the mouse isn't that, but it's been the mouse's house for its entire life. Yeah, I was rooting for the mouse, uh, but then the mouse was like fucking up their shit, and I was like, ooh, I don't know. Yeah, once the mouse attacks Christopher Walken. When the mouse gets less sympathetic, because he fucks Chris with walking up and then tortures him psychologically. <laughs> and like multiple times too. Yeah, because Christopher like... Walken, like, he ends up the same as the lady. He gets into the chest in the attic and screaming. Yeah. But the, uh, to be fair, the mouse does call the cops. <laughs> they, they tried to make the mouse more sympathetic with that, but I was like, I don't know. That he did still did. psychologically torture Christopher yeah, Walken. <laughs> Well, I, okay, I don't think he put him in the chest. That chuckles. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, that, that is the moment where the mouse is less sympathetic. I felt really bad for Catzilla. Dumb waiter scene. I, I did <laughs> the not. Sad, I, the sad muling. I had no emotions for most of this movie. Yeah, me either. To be fair, it, Catzilla also, like, isn't a cat for most of the scenes. It is monstrous. There is a real cat in a couple scenes. God. The the Catzilla CG, like I could notice the CG mouse, but I was like, this, is... and I think that's part of just yeah. how how fast the mouse is moving. But also, the, yeah, the CG mouse like didn't look bad for the time. Yeah, the cat looked bad. Yeah, the cat looks horrible even when it's not CG. Nah. Like even when it's supposed to be like a practical effect and not a real cat. Like there's, I don't know, there was a scene where it was like moving around like it's a head. stuffed animal. Yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, oh my. Yeah, the that only really the only real cat scene I think of is right before they go under the rug. I feel like they should have went harder into the uh, you know the uh, the Dutch family. I feel like the hair models. Have, yeah, the hair models. They should have went much heavier into that. Yeah, um, they so. they basically only exist to be the the happy ending. For yeah. Can you imagine this movie if he ends up with April at the end? What a, what a... He could. Yeah. And he seems kind of weak of will, so maybe he does. But <laughs> um, Yeah, I, I genuinely didn't remember until the hair model showed up. I was like, oh, he still end up with April. That's not a redemption. That's not good. Not a marriage to I mean, say. I that house is sitting on it's probably still worth 50k. Well, apparently not. Yeah, man. 50, I mean, fifty thousand. The you... house was worth less than the land. Yeah, I think yeah, the, yeah. the evaluation yeah. of the house is crazy. When they say fifty k, now it's fifty k. Yeah, that's right? uh, that's. So that must be that they must have no just said way. like, well, this house needs to be torn down because it's garbage, right? Yeah, but the, the, the property's probably... huge. It has a lake. So the property, so the property I know, but fifty k in ninety seven for like basically think of it like this, right? The house has already torn itself down, so like they might get more out of it than fifty k. You still have to clear it off. And... Yeah, but like it's easier to clear off if it's all on the ground instead of like still have to you know like bring shit up and tear it down and crush the shit down in there. Fifty k yeah, adjusted for inflation, only eighty two thousand. It's but it's got to be worth. It. What? How much would a demolition on a house like that cost in ninety seven? It can't be that much. Clearly nothing. No. Also, if that thing came down that easily, like, I'm telling you, you right just now, do that yourself. Grab some, demo, I'm telling you right now, demolition's thousands, like 15, grab 20, some gasoline, 30. Grab some gasoline and burn that baby down. Yeah, they do do control burns. They could have had it done by the There's uh, no houses fire. There. Yeah, clearly like every wood in the house is rotted because Nathan Lane could just bash his head through the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, that's the other thing. Like it had to be completely eaten. The house is worthless. But here's the thing. Anyone could look at that house and be like, oh, it's fucked up. Like, this house is super... I'm taking the million and running. Like, that's just what I would do. Like, I mean, as fucked up so, as it is, it was still a beautiful house. Yeah. yeah, but, like, 
at I'm telling you right now, as soon as they offered a million dollars, I'd be like, we're splitting this. I'm taking my 500K and I'm walking away and I'll never have to work again in my life, especially in 97, man. 500K. Yeah. It is crazy that people were like ready to spend several million. Like, I know it's a LaRue house, but like, how do you restore that without it no longer being the LaRue? Yeah, you, you, you can't. The ship That's of Theseus. The yeah. You, yeah, but you <laughs> simply cannot restore it. I guess you could argue that since LaRue is like an architect, uh, for the, the, the design is the, the value, so you just remodel the house to the design. But like, yeah. it's inauthentic at that point. But Is LaRue a real uh, architect? Oh. It'd be interesting if it turns out that it is. It sounds too perfect when they were talking about the molding. I think it, they just were like, oh, pretentious uh, builder man. Maybe. I don't, don't think... I don't know if he's real. Hmm. Don't, I don't think he's real. Okay. Well, either way, I feel like there were elements of this movie that were somewhat interesting. Uh, but yeah, overall, I did not like this movie. I mean that's that's perfectly acceptable. We're not always gonna like this. Part. Some fun uh, set pieces, some fun comedy, some really yeah. I characters. felt I felt like it had all the things necessary to make it a good movie. Mm -hmm. Like it it had everything it needed. I I feel like Mr. Verbinski here just wasn't ready fully to to take the plunge into full direct i think that happens very often though with uh commercial directors or you know music video directors etc same thing yeah I mean, it's really good first movie though i mean for fair. a first movie yeah but at the same time they, he had the backing of dreamworks that's true so like <laughs> how bad could you really be i mean pretty bad like jupiter ascending was a movie but that's funny because it's so bad <laughs> that's true um, I mean, you say he had the backing of DreamWorks. DreamWorks was in its infancy. At well, yeah, but it's, they still get how much? What was the budget on Mobson? It had to be at least twenty million. Um, I I would bet it's more than that because it's like the house set yeah, seems like I'm it would cost quite least, least. like thirty eight million. Yeah, it made one hundred twenty two million, despite not even being a popular. Movie. So this movie it's was not a failure. Price. It was not a complete failure, yeah. But I mean, like, if depending on how much they put into the marketing, they could have still wound up just making their money back. Although the cumulative worldwide gross, yeah, that's probably did fine. Um, I'm trying to find out. It's only showing me DreamWorks animation. I'm trying to figure out DreamWorks movie. Although the opening weekend was probably really scary since they didn't make it back in the opening. Yeah, this movie yeah. predates yeah. everything. Um, Ants was DreamWorks' first animated film, and that's 1998. I, th I think this movie would have been better if it were in a, a different aspect ratio. Why? You want to go back in time and tell them that, or yeah, I think it would have been better as a sixteen by ten, like Jurassic Park, so you could really feel the the house, like the 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 girth of the house, you know. Yeah, because that's actually a thing that like people always talk about, like, well, the imagery in Jurassic Park is so much better because, uh, it's sixteen by ten, so you can like really because it's more vertical, you can see like the giant house and i feel like especially for the house you have all this uh space and like beautiful architecture show it off you got to strut what you got if you got it on it i just don't think it was about that though maybe they didn't got it i don't know maybe okay so yeah this is one. this is mouse mouse on is dreamworks pictures third film what was their first? Uh, the Peacemaker, which I've never heard of. What about their second? 
uh, Amistad. It's a... Huh. I know Spielberg backed DreamWorks pretty heavily. Uh, yes. He uh, founded it. By, it was Katzinger, him. right? Yeah, Katzenberg, Spielberg, and Geffen formed it. Yeah. Because he, um, does he Disney still... wanted, like, baby shit all the time. Yeah, Spielberg was like, I want to make my own shit, form a studio. And then Katzenberg, if you don't know, he's the one behind, like, uh kind of he's known as the guy who like revived disney so he's he's behind yeah he was the disney ceo uh, for like a decade or so. yeah well was he the ceo or was he the next in line and then he didn't get it i think that's what it was uh he was chairman of yeah so he's ceo so he was kind of or, behind Beauty is this chairman ceo i don't think so no chairman of the board is separate okay but he kept pushing for like a little bit more adult content, you know? So like, uh, and nothing like too crazy. It's not like he wanted this, like, but I think his last one was maybe like Hercules where they just were like, no, it's a kid's movie for kids. We will not do anything else. Yeah. He, I mean, he's definitely credited for the revival, um, like the yeah. Disney Renaissance, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Night Before Christmas, uh, Lion King. Definitely and a big Beauty deal. It was kind of the first one that got the ball rolling. Like everything else after it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Because, yeah, uh, Beauty and the Beast wins an Oscar. The first one. Uh, I believe it's the first animated that. film to win an Oscar. You got Aladdin. You got Aladdin. Aladdin. And Aladdin. So, yeah, a huge. Don't forget Prince Abu. So, obviously, a huge, uh, huge talent behind this. Studio. I think it, it is an awkward start for DreamWorks Picture, personally. Yeah. Um, because even after Amistad, Ollie I haven't heard of, Deep Impact, Small Soldiers, I Yeah, I like that movie, uh, too. Was a good movie. And then 98, you finally get to Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. But really, can we just say, DreamWorks was really saved by Shrek. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, I think they were probably fine before Shrek. They were doing all right. What did they have? The Shrek. Tales? Ants, Prince of Egypt, Road to El Dorado, Chicken Run, yeah. meet, all did fine. meet the Parents, Dorado, like, everybody loves Cast it. Away. I saw it. Cast in Away. Theater. I feel like we saw it in theaters. I'm pretty sure Grandma took us to go see Road, of Elder, Road to El Dorado in theater. I remember seeing that movie in theaters. I don't know if I saw it in theaters. I remember watching Also, Jonathan that. would have been two. Yeah, I remember watching it at Woodville Mall. That's why I don't remember watching it. It's actually the last movie that I I recall. No, the last movie I watched at Woodville Mall was National Treasure. Um, I think I think you're wrong though. I don't think Shrek is what saves DreamWorks. I think it's the movie after Shrek. Really, Shrek Two Evolution. Uh, no, that was (laughs) wasn't that like a massive failure? (laughs) Probably. I mean, I liked it. It's a terrible movie that I love. I thought it was funny, but that was a movie I know Grandma didn't. Uh, oh fuck! Have us go see the title of the movie alone. Like no, <laughs> um, this movie, yeah, Evolution Bear. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I don't know. They had they had popular films, Shrek. But Shrek was the banger. Like without Shrek, I, I would say Shrek it, for their animated studio. Certainly, no, it's just total the banger. Like, they're like, I mean, the no, literally, crazy. they had fucking Spielberg making shit. Yeah, them. but Saving Private Ryan, what, like, maybe it had an 80 million budget and it did like 150. But they don't, they don't do movie. that stuff anymore. Like, they've yeah, they don't make like fully into animated, and I think that it's because of Saving Private Ryan was a 70 million budget, it made 482 million. I mean, let's look at Shrek. Cast Away had a ninety million budget. It made four hundred twenty-nine million dollars. It's, it's a good. Why don't, why don't good, they do that stuff anymore? That, listen, it's a good uh, thing. But listen here, Shrek, sixty million at four eighty-four. So it's the same thing. Yeah, four billion. No box office. It made four hundred eighty-four million. Yeah, yeah, but what about Shrek two? Not four billion. It's a fucking killer. I'm just telling you. Also, Shrek two was later. Shrek 2 was 150 million, 990. Between Shrek 1 and Shrek 2, they also had um, The Time Machine, Minority Port, AI. Time Machine was trash. The Ring, Catch Me If You Can. Yeah, but like Catch Me If You Can is good. 
I'll give you that. This is all DreamWorks. Yeah, because these are all Spielberg's films. Yeah, yeah, Spielberg's. I mean, Spielberg was the guy who pushed it for sure. But uh, I would say Shrek is worth like what almost three Saving Private Ryan's. No. Yeah, I mean, they made the same amount of money. What do you mean? No, no, no. Shrek, Shrek two. Again, very close money. Where's Saving Private Ryan's uh, sequel? (laughs) Okay. That's all I gotta say. But anyway, I'm ready to rate this. This is going on long enough. We're talking about DreamWorks as a whole. Um, yeah, we can rate. Luke, what are you giving it? I'm between a four and a five. Go on. I think I think I gotta give it a four. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm gonna give it a three. Ooh. Even an eight, fuck y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would watch this again. I like this movie. I absolutely would. Not. I would not. I, unless you paid me maybe like fifty bucks or more, I would not watch this movie. Um. Yeah, that's fine. And like, I remember watching this and also being like, I don't like. Still it. not the lowest rated movie. Yeah. I'm also well, just that's not lost in movie. translation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I'll, I, I'll say it again. Like, it, it's just, it's not like. It's not a bad movie. It just isn't my type of movie. Like, yeah, no, that's fair. I'm also, yeah, I'm just, I've never been a fan of slapstick humor. Me either. But I will say that the old slapstick does have a little bit of coolness to it because everything had to be practical. Not then. only, not only. I mean, that, a lot but... of this movie is practical too. Yeah, but I mean, like, a lot of it isn't. Like, I wouldn't say a lot of this movie is practical. Yeah, they were pretty choosy about exactly what they didn't see. But also, I don't know. It's like. It's less impressive because even if it's still practical, it's not like there's a difference between practical where like you have you ropes have and stuff, and there's a difference between practical where it's like, hey, everything on the screen happened. Like they didn't actually ride a bathtub down the stairs without any sort of safety precautions. Back in the day, they dropped I mean, a fucking house on a guy and he went through a window and he just did that. That's great. And they calculated out like the fucking window. Yeah. To be like, I hope it lands. Well, right. no, oh, hold on. No, they didn't just calculate it. They dropped the panel beforehand and saw where it landed. And no, it was a one take. It was a one take thing. Like they destroyed the panel. I yeah, guarantee. Of a guarantee there were tests done. No, the test was math. You can read it. But even but still, anyway, I, I I don't know. I, I wouldn't be worried about doing that, that stuff. Matters at all. I mean, it's cool and all, but like at the same time, it's like I wouldn't want an actor to potentially die. No, no, no. Yeah. That's not like it's just it's cool in the sense of like I don't know. I, I don't. It makes it real. Like I, I think slapstick has to be real. To be I like, saw this. On like, maybe I'm just uh, dumb, but I, I if I was the actor in that situation, I wouldn't be worried about doing that. You remember? Uh, so there's this today. I found out. I already knew how fucked up. I already knew how fucked up uh, some of this other stuff is. What do you, what do you call it? Um, uh, Wizard of Oz, right? I already knew how fucked up Wizard of Oz was as far as, like, yeah, people died. Like, he died on set? What? Yeah, they, they say there's a guy, like, hanging himself in the background. Uh, no, that is, that is not real. I said there's all sorts of rumors and shit. But during one of the takes, I think the Wicked Witch of the West... Uh, she was burned, like badly burned. And they're like, all right, come on tomorrow and do the next piece. And she's like, fuck no, I'm not doing the next set and get someone else to do it. And literally on the next set, I'm pretty sure either was badly burned, uh, her like stunt double or died. Like one of the two, like horribly burned. Um, I don't think anyone died, but yeah, someone definitely did get bad burned. But yeah. I think that's what, as far as we can go today about all this stuff. Um, yeah, I, I don't have any book reports this week. I did order the Snowpiercer graphic novel. Um, also, I thought about it for all the shit we give Tenet. Um, I would watch Tenet before I watch Lost in Translation. Really? I would just put, I, I feel like I like the moving imageries of Lost in Translation. Really, I like the, the images of Tenet. Like, I just think that there was a lot visually there with Tenet. I think they're both bad movies. I would, yeah, just, I would just watch Tenet before I watch Lost in Translation. I think I'll just watch some porn. Yeah, I mean, I would watch anything. Yeah. I would um, watch porn for the story. 
before I watch. I've, I've surpassed you now, Luke. Total points given. 55, you've given 50. Well, I'll have to take it back. I give out a lot of eights. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I just calls them like I sees them. I mean, you, you've given out comparable sevens. Yeah. Um, I, and again, like last movie, I legit was like, oh, I don't... I, I really thought I was going to be the worst... Uh, I thought I was gonna give it the lowest score when we when we had like started. Yeah, you were wrong. Yeah, I was. I ended up. I said, Damn, I think the I'm truth gonna. Is give you it. like Lost in Translation the best. I mean, out of us, yeah. My favorite, clearly. I mean, let me let me find the link here for the Google Docs. Oh yeah, I've got that that movie lens site. I want to see what it thinks I would have given. My previous yeah. rankings on this podcast. Yeah, I mean, it's just... A six. Hmm. Maybe at some point, when you have like 100 movies, it will properly... Uh, yeah, how many ratings do I have on my, my actual podcast? I don't know. I've got about 100. You but think it would be most of them cool. aren't comedies, probably. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's still so it's just... Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess that's it for this week. Luke, your pick is the movie. In... I, I might have one, but I'm not going to say anything. Uh, in that case, unless anybody has anything else. I don't think so. I think we're... Uh... Well, thanks for listening.